Hi everyone, this is For the Love of Comics and in this episode I'll be tackling the age-old and fan-favorite question, which is the best Tintin book? I'll be picking from the 23 complete volumes that Hergé published, from Tintin and the Land of the Soviets in 1929 to Tintin and the Picaros in 1976. For more introductory facts and tidbits, check out our What is Tintin video linked above. You can also take a look at a quick overview of 22 of these albums in another video also linked in the top right corner of your screen. Such a range of stories told over 40 plus years obviously allows for great debate and discussion on which stories are the best and this video is my two cents. But instead of simply naming the best Tintin, I will start after the break by listing five honorable mentions, my personal favorites outside of my number one. So let's jump into what is essentially my personal top six adventures of Tintin. Honestly, I have very little doubt about which adventure of Tintin is the best one. The number one is pretty clear and unquestionable to me. However, the honorable mentions I'll start with are purely subjective and may even contain books that some consider the least likable Tintins. So without further ado, here are my five honorable mentions for the best Tintin adventures in chronological order. With apologies to the others that come before it, in particular the Blue Lotus, the first flat out great Tintin adventure is The Black Island. The story of The Black Island effortlessly zips from Belgium to England to Scotland, combining comedy, usually via Thompson and Thompson, and danger to keep the story developing and the mystery unraveling. The Black Island contains both the tight plotting as well as the trains, planes and automobiles buffet that became staples of the series. It also has an ending and climax that I really enjoy, particularly because it is so different from what leads up to it. But it is especially the lovely redrawn art and details within it, guns, vehicles, clothes, that put this in my top six Tintins of all time. Following the Black Island, my next honorable mention is Land of Black Gold which I understand is not a favorite for many people, although I have a tough time figuring out why. I love this desert adventure completely, from the gloom-soaked start with the world on the brink of war, to the authentic feeling Middle Eastern lands, every page in this book feels lush and fully imagined. Land of Black Gold features the introduction of some indelible characters, as well as the reintroduction of some of my favorites. The comedy and hijinks play an important role in moving the story forward, and again, the ending contains twists and a subversion of expectations that really works for me. From a perhaps controversial pick to a more universally beloved one, my next honorable mention in chronological order is Tintin in Tibet. A spectacular mountain rescue adventure full of heart and emotion, but losing none of the globetrotting wonder or dangerous thrills this series is known for, Tintin in Tibet contains not only some of the best art in the series, but also the most heartfelt story, in which there are no villains or dastardly plots, but nevertheless feels urgent and desperate. As a child, I was particularly happy to see India in this book, but over the years I've grown to appreciate almost every facet of this ode to friendship and not giving up. The fourth out of my five honorable mentions is the very next volume, The Castafiore Emerald. An almost experimental meta story that stays in one location is full of red herrings, plot twists that aren't really twists, all while bouncing characters off of each other in a sly comedy of manners. It's almost an anti-Tintin adventure in many ways. The Castafiore Emerald abandons the formulas of globetrotting and conspiracies to make something extremely unusual and unforgettable within the Tintin library. And the final honorable mention for my personal favorites is the last completed Tintin adventure, Tintin and the Picaros. Like with Land of Black Gold, I was surprised to find out that there are many who do not consider this a good book, but I love it. Tintin is perhaps more along for the ride in this adventure than any other, but still very invested in the safety of his friends. And he's also more of a complete character here than in any other story other than Tintin in Tibet. Then there's the political satire, the interest in revolution and what that really means, the exotic South American jungle locations, the chemical cure for alcoholism. All of these really stand out as story elements for me. 
Perhaps best of all is the dynamic between the characters, both the series regulars like Haddock and Calculus and returning characters like General Alcazar and Professor Ridgewell. And all of these combine to make this a great romp and a satisfying conclusion to this long running series. The ending again is one that defies regular adventure expectations and is not really the point of the story which is just icing on a wonderful cake for me. And this brings us finally to my number one Tintin adventure of all time, something that I obviously skipped over going through my honorable mentions. And as I said before, while I realize some of my top five picks are purely subjective, I do feel that my number one is objectively a great, great story. So unquestionably in my mind, the best Tintin adventure is The Calculus Affair. This is a crackling non-stop chase story brimming with almost everything that the Tintin series is known for. While many of the honorable mentions are books that defy traditional adventure story expectations, The Calculus Affair is a straight up adventure story that does everything almost perfectly. There's international espionage, double crosses, impersonations, kidnapping, microfilm, a helicopter chasing a motorboat across a lake bordering two countries and terrific art brimming with detail. The breathless pace is matched by great characterizations of our central characters and this contains none of the more problematic depictions that may affect some of the other Tintin stories. I could almost do a separate video on how well paced this book is. Almost every two page set ends with a cliffhanger making this a page turner in the truest sense of the term. And it still manages to twist the ending a bit while playing it completely straight all the way through. In almost every way, I consider The Calculus Affair to be the perfect Tintin adventure. So there you have it, my personal picks for the best Tintin stories. I'd love to hear what you think, if you agree or disagree, and what you consider to be the best stories. If you're interested, check out my other Tintin related videos and subscribe to get notified about future uploads. This has been For the Love of Comics and as always, thank you for watching.